Welcome to the second episode of our Thirsty Sword Lesbian series, everyone. We have some fantastic character creation coming at you this episode. But before we get to us being peak us, announcements. First up, my episode of Kill Every Monster came out recently, and it was an absolute delight to record. I love how it turned out. Mm -hmm. I told Dylan recently that they made me sound coherent, and I did not feel coherent when I got done with the recording, so like... <laughs> excellent editing work, Aram. Um, if you didn't catch it yet, I hope you will find a moment to take a listen. It is me talking about undead things, so it's not far off from what we like to do here. <laughs> you can find the episode at killeverymonster.com or wherever you find your podcasts. We still don't have any new reviews to read at the end of this episode, and we release at least three episodes a month, so... We're going to need some more reviews because we want to thank you personally. Also, it helps us out by recommending our podcast to new folks and gets more people to listen. If you would like to help us out and hear us read your lovely words on the show, please take a moment to leave a review in one of the many places we can find it, like Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Podchaser, Facebook, Podcast Addict, and so many more. As usual, if you want to support us another way, you can become a patron of the One Shot Podcast Patreon. At $5 a month and up, you get access to the Secret Archive, which has bonus content from all of the shows on the network. Money you give helps us pay for hosting fees, um, art for the shows, new equipment like my amazing new microphone. Woo! Woo! Uh, if you would like to become a patron, you can find that at patreon.com slash one shot podcast. Mm -hmm. And finally, as mentioned in the series, there was a fan created bundle released with six new playbooks and three new settings for Thirsty Sword Lesbians. You can find that for download on itch if you enjoyed what you heard this week and want even more. We'll have a link to that in our show notes. That is all for the announcements this week. So please enjoy the next hour plus of exceedingly on-brand content <laughs> as we continue our character creation for Thirsty Sword Lesbians. Enjoy! episode of Character Creation Cast, we created a setting that combined magical girls, necromancers, and space pirates. Our characters are part of a crew on a living spaceship named Solar Flare, powered by souls and necromancy. Our rivals, the Soul Leader, captained by Evangeline, are guaranteed to be a thorn in our sides, but it's a thorn attached to a rose because the whole crew is just so attractive. We were just about to dive into character creation after picking our playbooks. Enjoy. Yeah. So we've got a Legion and a Hollow Goddess, which are from the um, Advanced Lovers and Lesbians expansion, and then a Spooky Witch from the core book. I love it. All right. So what's next then? So next, um, pull up your playbook and... You get to pick between two columns of stats for your playbook, and that will be informed by which moves you want to have a higher bonus for and trigger more mm. upbeats on. So the Spooky Witch probably wants a pretty high spirit, um, but th but then you, there are moves also that will call on wit that you might take optionally um, that are part of the Spooky Witch playbook. The Legion, I ought to remember because I just played a Legion. Um, but I think the stat lines, basically, the usual format for the stat lines is there will be a plus one in a, in a stat in both of them. That's sort of core and necessary to that concept. And then you'll have an option for which um, other stat you get positives and negatives to. Mm -hmm. If you want to be doing a bunch of flirting, you're going to want some heart for that. Um, 
if you see your character as doing a bunch of successful um, like upbeats in fighting, then either daring or grace, or uh, you might be able to swap in another stat. So um, the spooky witch can use witch fire to um, swap in their spirit to fight with, but the downside is there's always catastrophic consequences of a downbeat, right? A mm. lot of collateral damage. And all of the stat swap moves have some sort of thing that is of interest that is secondary to the stat swap. There's no move that's just like roll a different number here because I think that's boring. Um, so the talk nerdy to me is another one that the spooky witch has where basically in addition to being able to roll wit to entice someone, you also get a special interest that you are. Um, mm especially knowledgeable about and it gives you a, a go-to if you want to babble about something and be cute about it and entice someone that way very cool i think you can also blurt out no that's that's intrinsic to the spooky witch the i like snails you can blurt out uh <laughs> an embarrassing uh fact about oh yourself my God, I love while, uh... <laughs> yeah sometimes people approach the game and like i don't know i'm not suave i don't know how to banter but like do not worry. <laughs> there is total support for awkward lesbians here. <laughs> oh, this is so good. So I can actually, uh, and then, so I, I got uh, sidetracked. So you're going to pick your stats, and then you're going to pick um, a couple of starting moves. And you're also going to fill in things like name, pronoun, and then the aesthetics, which you can choose from the options that are there in the playbook, or you can always make up your own. Okay. Very cool. Um, so, yeah, I, I saw mine for the Legion. I'm either mm -hmm. choosing between uh, plus one Daring and plus one Spirit, and then minus one Heart, mm -hmm. or minus one Daring, plus one Grace, and plus one Heart. Oh, um, yeah. And I think I, I, I'm leaning more towards the Grace and Heart aspect, sure. uh, which makes a, a lot of sense for this, yeah, uh, this magical girl pirate. Oh, yeah? Um, What's that? And then it says you get to add one to two different stats on top right. of that. Yes. Um, so I leaned into heart, uh, gave oh, it a nice. plus one. So now I'm at plus two heart. Um, and then I threw another plus one on spirit, keeping my daring at minus one because, um, you know, I like failure as well in PBTA. Yeah, downbeats are super fun. Um, you'll sometimes, because it's possible to bump up people's roles after the fact, you'll sometimes have this moment where you'd be like, do I really want to spend a resource? Because a downbeat would be really fun right now. Mm -hmm. I want to see what sort of complication is going to show up to yeah. make the story more dramatic. Absolutely. And I, I like uh, that my my character is uh, this, like, legion this this magical girl with a with a mantle a history to it probably mm -hmm. of these amazing fighters but she is not an amazing fighter uh in like the direct sense of the word mm -hmm. like she she has to uh, more rely on her grace than than her actual daring uh skill at arms and whatnot mm -hmm. Yes, that's fun. And also, you've got some fun playbook moves that um, let you bump up a downbeat or a mixed beat to uh, the next tier. And they, you know, they have a quote unquote cost associated with them, but the cost is fun too because, nice. um, you know, it's drama. Like someone you're smitten with becomes smitten with someone dangerous to you. That's great. Yeah. How is that a downside? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Love that. Oh, uh, it's so good. So what's, what's everybody else going with for their uh, their stat choices? Um, I added points to wit and spirit. So those are both at plus two. My heart is minus one. <laughs> and then my daring and grace are at zero. Love it. Love it. Um, so I I see the character, the, the hollow goddess, ghost amalgam. Definitely high spirit. And then I don't think I'm doing as much of the the direct fighting. But so the question is, how much flirtiness and, and heart do I want versus being like a knowledge resource? And I think I think 
you know, if she were still a dream mirror, she would be choosing to be a resource for others. But having having gotten through that initial phase of um, just wanting to please others, I'm going to go for bumping up heart a little bit. Mm. So I'm going to wind up with a with um, my only plus two is going to be in spirit. But I've got decent grace, decent heart. And um, there, the reason I'm bumping up spirit more is because some of the playbook moves trigger off of it. Mm. So, so I, I, I'm, go- I'm planning to be a um, information source with my spirit and not rely on wit for that. So I just, I just remember things from my lives, but actually figuring out what somebody is about is is less in my bailiwick mm-hmm. so yeah so those are the stats a column and then two plus ones and then the playbook will tell you how many of the playbook moves you get to pick and if there's anything else that you have to pick um associated with your playbooks feature so um the spooky witch gets to define uh more like what the unseen are mm-hmm. um do you think that's the the ghosts or is that something different? I think different? so. I think that that's okay. That's what I'm envisioning it as, and cool. as like my my role on this ship too is just to like keep track of those things. Mm-hmm. Love that. And then does the legion the legion gets to define a tragedy? Yeah, yeah. What's the tragedy oh. that keeps coming up in all of your reincarnated lives? Gosh. Uh, so yeah, tragedy <laughs> says fate is a wheel, and legions like yourself are caught in its turns. The one common thing across your lives is a tragedy that haunts your present. What is it? Oh goodness. <laughs> oh, that is that is a big question, and so good. Um, yeah. Do you think? Is it helpful to brainstorm or? Yeah, it, I, any any like uh, suggestions would be helpful. I've got the inklings of something, but I would love yeah. to hear any any thoughts. Well, it's 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 always fun to like tie it to a relationship, right? Like you mm-hmm. you always fail to protect the one that you love most, or mm-hmm. you always trust someone that you shouldn't and wind up um, hurting someone else, oh. or. Um, uh, yeah, like connecting it to other people is fun. And then either, you know, is this the person that I shouldn't trust? Or is this is this is this a relationship I can actually like have faith in? Or is this person actually going to help me break this cycle of tragedy? Mm. So I would recommend making it about some kind of um, yeah. interpersonal mm-hmm. tragedy. Okay. Uh, my... I, I, I guess go big because we're not playing these characters. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> That's true. As as we always say, there are no consequences here. Yeah. So <laughs> the, the big tragedy of my Legion is the more that we love somebody, the more tragic I will lose them. I, like the, the bigger oh. the tragedy of I will lose them. Uh. Like either either I, lo- I love them a bit, <laughs> and maybe they go away, or somebody takes them away, or whatever. But oh, no. I love them with my whole soul. They will die a tragic death, and I have no way to stop it. Beautiful. So of course you have to try to keep yourself from feeling for anyone, or oh, else you have to drag that, them into your cycle of tragedy. Not possible. <laughs> <laughs> love that oh so now i i need to define something oh yeah i'm gonna go for so the the hollow goddess has a hollow glamour which comes with a bonus and with drawbacks oh my gosh okay this is definitely the toppy um hollow glamour so my hollow glamour is the crown so i think i i manifest with a crown of bones and this is absolutely um compensating for having previously had that dream mirror mode of just pleasing others Mm. and i think maybe also we might have absorbed the soul of like some literal dead monarch or something at Mm. some point and they're mostly kept in check by like all of the other souls but they've got some um you know monarchical aesthetics Mm -hmm. so got the crown of bones um and uh, when I confidently proclaim a truth about a person or society, 
a significant number of previously undecided people will believe me. Wow. So I can I can just proclaim that things are true and those who don't have strong opinions will will take that seriously. So I guess I've got a platform. I'm a I'm an influencer ghost <laughs> uh, mass. Um, and then the downside is that when I try to entice someone, I have to do so in a way that demonstrates my superiority and dominance. Um, so that might mean that the entice move doesn't even trigger if they're not into that kind of thing, but, um, <laughs> that's the mode. So I feel like the crew might be adjusting to the fact that like the, the little ghost amalgam who just wants to please everyone and be like a cozy home mm -hmm. is, is, um, getting, uh, dramatically more assertive mm -hmm. and, um, uh, I think we all feel pretty protective of, of Francesca. So a lot of it is like, you know, if someone is letting Francesca do something, to be like, no, you do that yourself. So you've got a, you've got a more assertive um, bunch of ghosts on the ship now. It's amazing. What could go wrong? Great. <laughs> <laughs> assertive ghosts, not a problem. Great. Not a problem assertive ghosts. at all. <laughs> So then um, my playbook says I choose two of the playbook moves. You probably have some pre-selected, um, but it'll tell you in the playbook moves header, it'll say how many more to choose. Um, and you can choose any of those that are, that are there in the playbook moves option. When a character advances, they're able to take moves from other playbooks as well, which can help um, like implement a character concept who straddles two different playbooks. But you start with the ones from your own. So I'm going to choose the antivirus ability, which is when someone who has a string on me is threatened, I can show up to defend them even if it seems impossible. And I get a bonus to protect. So just ghosts will show up nice. to help out. Right. <laughs> Anyone else have a move that they are definitely going to take? Uh, I picked Eerie Companion. You have a little pet mm. monster or spirit. Choose two basic moves. Um, let's see here. Companion grants you plus one in these moves. When it assists you, but its assistance is always obvious and alarming to ordinary people. Yes. In addition, you can speak <laughs> with monsters. Um, so I figured that there's probably some, like, a rogue soul or something on the ship that kind of follows me around as opposed to being in its proper place, fueling yeah. the ship. Do you think it's like a person or is it um, like an animal ghost, like a space squid or something? <laughs> um, <laughs> I think it's a person. Cool. I think it's like... Slightly annoying, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's like not not invited to like, the amalgam. <laughs> not entirely helpful and like mm -hmm. you know. Oh no, that's amazing. Just like extremely critical of like what yeah. I'm. Oh, I like like why are you doing it that way? That's not how I would do it. Well, you're dead, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, for my first move that I selected, I went for. Uh, Cut right to your bones. Mm. Uh, experienced soldiers make for experienced lovers. When your soul Ooh. recognizes another, you connect deeply and swiftly. Whenever you entice someone, you may give them a strain on you to gain a strain on them and declare that you knew each other in a past incarnation. The GM may tell you how uh, or may leave it a mystery for the time being. So you have a move that basically... Guarantees someone's going to die tragically is what you're telling me. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 I mean, there's, there's who's no... to say that you have a positive relationship in your past life? They could be a nemesis. That's true. For now. Could That's be. For true. now. Exactly. <laughs> That's true. Um, and it, it's not like an instantaneous thing. There could be happiness for a while. Uh, it's just, you know, at the worst possible time, tragedy may strike. Gotcha. So is it, is it worth it? Uh, yes is the answer. Yes, it's my answer. <laughs> I also picked Witchfire. You may roll nice. plus spirit instead of plus daring to fight, but you're very conspicuous when you do. The consequence of a six minus will be severe. This is so good. So, so like both of your playbook moves are leaning into just being conspicuously weird and dangerous. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's really good. Definitely. And I also get to yell at people about snails. So yeah, snails or great. ghosts or whatever. I decide, like, yeah. Um, 
Do you know cool. the, the melting point of of souls? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I do. I mean, why don't you show me? <laughs> oh, goodness. That's amazing. I did also pick a bone sword, just so we're clear. Wonderful. My aesthetics. Um, oh, so so that's good. both the picks for Spooky Witch. Do you have more picks to make on the Legion? Yeah, I'm, I'm between two. Um, one of them I want to pick because it, it adds that 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 juicy like past life backstory um, oh, yeah. whenever it's used that's the just like you wanted um it, like once per session you get to declare uh that you and your allies have access to exactly what you needed uh in terms of a timely opportunity based on like Ooh. you know your all your past life stuff so that's really cool but like walk to a different song lest me become that magical girl with whole transformation sequence and hell yeah you want that one stop picking the thing that's yeah, useful we're not playing the game no i'm gonna walk to a different song uh so you've learned to wield a bit of the magical energies of the world in the same way that you wield your sacred weapon uh you may change your appearance to anything you like with as much or as little detail as you're choosing uh for this to work however it has to have been someone or something that you were once in love with which has happened a lot, I'm sure, over the millennia. Yeah. And each time it reminds you of the tragic end that that someone came to as mm -hmm. a result of your your destiny, your yeah. tragedy. Absolutely. That's beautiful. I love that move. I love that it has to be something you were once in love with. Mm -hmm. um, cool. So my my last hollow goddess pick is... Please state the nature of your psychiatric emergency. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when I am offering emotional support, I can ask the person I'm supporting what they hide from everyone else, but I can't help but overshare in response. So um, we'll have, have moments of closeness with the ghost ship who, um, yeah, is like all around you all the time, is a home and a friend and maybe more. <laughs> Gosh. So has everyone picked their playbook moves? Yeah, can we highlight the uh, the the main moves that we come with too? Because these are just oh, too sure. glorious not to get on audio. <laughs> uh, you're talking about the default playbook moves. Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. Tell us about it. So, so the Legion comes with Heaven's Sword. Um, this is legions have their heads full of ghosts of their past selves. The voices are loud, but their collective wisdom and unfulfilled desires uh, steadies the hand of the legion as they are at present. Once per session, tell a tale from your tragic past to bump a downbeat to a mixed beat or a mixed beat to an upbeat, and then choose two. Uh, and these are also good. Uh, an antagonist takes a strain on you. Something in your actions or words hurt, scare, or confuse somebody you care about. Destiny lashes out at an innocent who has ties to you or your friends. Someone you are smitten with becomes smitten with someone dangerous to you. Oh. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> it's, it's good. It's juicy. I love it. I, the way you talked about being full of ghosts makes me wonder... Um, if the source of sustainable ghost ship is, is this what happens when a legion meets a permanent death? Can they become the heart of a, of a ship? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> See, I just don't remember. My ghost memories are foggy on that topic. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I, I, yeah. I, I really do like that all three of our plane books uh, are revolving around these ghosts mm -hmm. right? of the universe. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, that, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. We've got like the reincarnation theme in the Legion. And then we have the lingering afterlife, um, theme of mm -hmm. the, the souls in the setting. So I think that would be really juicy too, mm -hmm. uh, to play through and figure out. So absolutely, that's fun. And then the spooky witch comes with, uh, a really, a really fun, um, default ability to interact with the unseen. Do you want to talk about that? Oh, let's see here. Hold it up so I can read it. Yeah. The unseen are mysterious beings most cannot perceive. Their very existence may be debated, but you know the truth because they have spoken to you. You know that some are kind and some are dangerous, 
that they have abilities and limitations that differ from normal people, and that you find yourself in between. Work with your GM to define what the unseen are, or what your spooky witch thinks they are. <laughs> they could be friendly spirits, phase-shifted aliens, psychic remnants, glitched-out nanites, angry poltergeists, or something totally other. When do you first interact with them? What do you think they want? And so then you have a bunch of, um, well, not a bunch of, but you have an ability based on communing with the unseen. Mm -hmm. um, I think in our case, it'll be these souls in this ship. Um, Absolutely. What happens? Uh, or, or souls yeah. uh, in any ship, right? In any ship, really, yeah. That's yeah, true. any They're souls, so yeah. yeah. Just loose souls mm -hmm. rattling around. Oh. Yep. But yeah, it gives you some sort of flexible choices of benefits. And, you know, honestly, the things that I like are the drawbacks. If you roll a mixed beat, you get to do the cool thing, but mm -hmm. also you might cause a haunting yes. or you might be judged by Hungry one of the unseen. unseen. destroy all non-sentient life in a small area. <laughs> yeah, that could happen. That yeah. happens. Are you the... <laughs> the recruiter of souls for like the wayward souls that we find uh, to recruit them to become part of our ship. Ooh, like, I don't think like you should put me in charge of public speaking. <laughs> <laughs> public speaking with with, with, the, the, dead. with the ghosts. With the dead. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Great. So publicly, I just look like a crazy person. But <laughs> right. Ghosts right, right, right. here. Great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. That's that's great. So we've all picked our moves. Uh, if you've picked your aesthetics, then um, we could introduce ourselves. There are also, if you're still trying to figure out, like, hmm, am I a cat girl? You could use the random tables that are at the back of the um, the expansion book, Advanced Lovers and Lesbians. So random tables are fun. Yeah. If you feel like rolling for what kind of cutie you are, then you can do that. Yes, and, I want um, random tables. What all page? right, let's do what it. What page am I looking at? That's a very oh, good question. Oh, there we go. I think I you found got them. them. <laughs> what page? Uh, like in the 250s, it looks like. Uh, yeah, it's at the end of the um, expansion book. Yeah. Oh, interesting. At 249, it looks like things start on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we can even roll random, um, like, NPC friends or threats and random plots that tie into each playbook's theme. So, yeah. I'm looking at the spooky witch, and, you know, one plot might be there are captive creatures. They're, they're unseen who are captive. Another one is there's conflict between the unseen. So, um, these are fun mm -hmm. little tables. But let's go all the way back to the random cutie table. I get out my... It looks like you use two different dice for this. Is that right? Yeah. So it's basically you roll 1d6 for the first digit and 1d6 for the second digit. So you get okay. a number that is, you know, between 11 and 66, but doesn't have all the other digits in it. Mm -hmm. So let's see. 44. Oh, merfolk. All right. I think my my front uh, ghost monarch was a uh, mermaid queen. So we've got this imperious mermaid queen who has mingled with the uh, the souls and is helping to. Maybe that was even like a conscious decision. So like the dream mirror ship romanced this mermaid queen ghost and then merged into the current more confident soul fl solar flare that we all know. Mm -hmm. But this is a great way. Oh, I'm going to roll for um, Francesca. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. So three and a six, 36. Is Francesca a kobold? That's adorable. I love that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so poor, like, tiny Francesca trying to do so much. <sighs> okay. Um, I got bunny folk. Oh, amazing. Uh, and that, that just sounds great. So good. The bunny, the bunny magical girl, Legion. Yeah. Are you a bunny folk um, in your normal state or do you transform into a magical bunny girl? I, I'm assuming based on this, we've got uh, we've got a, uh, a very diverse uh, set of uh, people that we can choose from because of you know, we're in space. There's a lot of different uh, cultures, a lot of different um, 
you know, ancestries and, and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So I think naturally a bunny folk that can turn into somebody significant from their past while yeah. their many pasts. Ah, so good. I got flower folk. Oh, oh, that's lovely. Decide what does that look like? I think of like the, the typical dryad uh, is what I'm picturing. Mm. But yeah, that could that could go any number of ways. Flower is a really broad category. It really is. As long as it's spelt with a W and not a U. Right, right. <laughs> but even then, there's like cornflower and like yeah, wheat flour. And it's like the all-purpose uh, flour. The, the Pillsbury Doughboy. Um, yeah, art. yeah. I like the Sun Hand playbook is all about like baking magical bread with your glowing warm hands. I love They're, it. Yeah, different kind of flower folk, but it's so it's such a sweet playbook, and it's also. Um, like a, it, it, it's a metaphorical representation of um, ADHD and fixation and mm. obsession um, type elements as well. Mm. So you can lean into or out of the sort of metaphorical elements depending on what you feel like. Yeah. But there's, there's always bread unless you make it something else that you make for other people. Like there's a sun hand metal smith in one of the games that I'm in. Nice. Oh. Nice. I so I'm uh rolling on the aesthetics and drives table. Oh yeah. Um, what do you got? So well, my aesthetic is uh parasol. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which sounds oh. amazing. Parasol bunny magical girl. Yes. I love that. Um and I love the thought of this parasol that I carry around transforming into this wicked sword. Uh, Absolutely. When when we get into battle. Uh, but in, like an elegant blade, right? Yes. And I like to it's I beautiful. like to think that the the legion that I'm a part of the sword changes based on the personality of the wielder. Oh, totally. So like you know past legions like but there's always like one very specific uh, detail to the sword that uh, that's always there. Mm-hmm. So I I love that so much. Parasol. It's really good. I got punk. Nice. Spooky punk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I rolled animal print. So. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> I wonder if bones count if they come from animals. Hmm. <laughs> it's not really print. It's more like it's just animals. It's not animal print. <laughs> right. It's just animals. <laughs> Maybe some like aquatic uh, themes like some eel, a, a boa that is just the spine of like a really thick eel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like that. And you said you rolled a drive as well? Yeah. Uh, so the drive that I got was expression, Ooh. Uh, which I, I is probably pretty fitting. <laughs> yeah. And in part, these are, um, you know, you can absolutely use them for PCs, but they're also helpful for like quickly coming up with an NPC. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got romance as my drive. Ooh. I got revenge. <laughs> oh, that's per- yes. perfect for you. Oh, well, obviously, you need to have history with Evangeline, <laughs> yeah. the oh. sexiest villain pirate <gasps> yeah. out there. Oh, we got a roll for Evangeline. Oh my gosh! And give I give me yes. a roll. Yeah. yeah, please roll for Evangeline because I guarantee. Uh, there's a past relationship of one of my past selves with one of Evangeline's oh. past selves as well. Yeah, for sure. Oh, definitely. Oh, my gosh. We got to get that love triangle or quadrilateral in Two, there. Two, four. Ooh, I rolled fairy for Evangeline. Oh, interesting. What if she's a siren? Like a <gasps> space siren? Yes, Ooh. obviously. Ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, love that. <laughs> love that. And, um... Yeah. So anyway, the 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 little tables are fun. I'm glad that we are getting yeah. to explore them a little bit. You can also roll for like random pronouns for NPCs or for your PCs or whatever, and so on. So let me know when you're done with the random tables, and we can do the relationship step as we yeah. are getting to the end of character creation. I I went to the uh, playbook specific random tables. And decided yeah. to roll up a, a friend and a threat. Oh, yeah. Tell me. Um, so the friend is a pen pal. Uh, there's always a record of your friendship. 
oh. uh, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, yeah I, I would love it to be like an anonymous pen pal. Like Ooh. we, it all, our messages always go to one another, but like for for whatever reason, uh, we just keep interacting with one another. But then we find out, you know, down the line that we're on the the rival ships. Totally. Yeah, I love that. And I think the the significance of the record is because you might forget, you might lose your memories of that um, friendship, but you always have the letters to go back to if that happens. Absolutely. All right, I'll roll a hollow goddess person. Let's see. I'm going to roll an enemy, a threat, a rare materials reseller. Hmm. So this threat wants my raw materials. They want my, my necromatrix of god bones that are at the center of the ship nice love it do you want to do you want to roll a spooky witch friend or threat or plot yeah, let's see here person forgotten by most Ooh. I have my friends. Mm. that could be your um I was gonna say, your familiar little, like magical companion yeah yeah that's a fun mystery hook too right yeah. like you have this magical companion most people, maybe even like they're not perceived by other souls, right? Like I can't even see this spirit. Yeah. That yeah. They're like so faded out. Yeah. Oh, um, I like that. Cool. Um. Yeah. Well, let's introduce ourselves. Yeah. Did anybody pick names? I I've got I've got a name for mine. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. I do too. <laughs> okay. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. I do too. Sweet. Sweet. Uh, let's introduce, let's introduce herself. So I am Solar Flare, she, her, or Zizer. I am a uh, space pirate ship with a big dangerous cargo bay. Uh, it's got <laughs> conveyor belts and like automatic arms, but it's all necromancy. So it's just like a skeletal arm that'll, the giant skeletal arm that'll move crates onto conveyor belts. And then lots of little, um, little, skeleton legs that'll like move the things along nice. uh, so that's like the vibe of the automation in this ship and then at the the um what's the the figurehead at this at the front the prow of the ship mm -hmm. is this majestic crowned mermaid queen nice. and uh, that is the form that I take to sort of show up in a ghostly shimmer in the mirrors around the ship so I'll show up and, and converse that way. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's me, the hollow goddess. Oh, what does my sword look like? I think the sword is, um, it's like a sword of bone claws. I love it. Oh, that's lovely. It's very good. Who's next? I will go next. Um, I have a spooky witch named Amaranth. <laughs> which, in case you're wondering, is a kind of flower, because she's a flower folk, uh, which symbolizes immortality. See what I did there? Uh, <laughs> this is a punk aesthetic. Um, and then yes. my drive is revenge. I haven't decided for what yet, though. We'll see. We'll see. Something, I think, with Evangeline, because I think that we need... We need a little stronger connection there. We'll see. I, I love um, that you're a punk flower. I know. It's so good. <laughs> Um, and I have a bone sword, which I think is, I think it only looks like bone in that it's white, um, but otherwise is like carved to look very much like a sword is very sharp. Um, but obviously is bone colored. <laughs> Ryan, Perfect. what about you? Yeah. So, uh, my character's name is Ariella Flourish. Uh, she, her pronouns. Um, she has a, an ageless demeanor, uh, wearing clothes from another time, uh, with a, an inspiring sword. Um, Ooh. yeah. All right. And you told us earlier that the sword can change its appearance depending yes. on who's wielding it. What's the feature that's always the same every time? All right, so this, this is a, it's, it's normally a parasol that she carries around um, and utilizes in, you know, social situations and, and just looks all uh, kind of uh, dapper in a way uh, that, that only a parasol can do uh, for somebody. 
Uh, but then when it transforms, it transforms into a sword that that is is recognizable uh, because of I'm going to say there's like a, a crest on the hilt where the hilt meets the blade. Um, there is a, a special crest of this legion that never changes. So for whoever has the sword, this crest right on the, the guard there is is uh, forever the same. And goodness, what? Does this crest look like is probably the next question is that that was going to be asked of me. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, I'm going to say it is, um, gosh, it is a uh, it effectively it, it looks like a broken heart emoji. Ooh. 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 All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. So, um, we've got some, some good dramatic characters. Let's figure out how they're connected. Each playbook yes. has specific relationship questions um, that you can answer to figure that out. Um, you can make up a different connection if you want, but they're there to help prompt your creative juices. So, mm -hmm. um, does everyone have those in front of them? For the expansion playbooks, it's page 270 of the PDF and for the basic playbooks, it's in the handouts document. Ah, there we go. Okay. So, and there are three prompts here and there are only two other PCs. So what I'm gonna do is suggest that if it fits, you toss the third prompt at one of the NPCs that we've made up, like Evangeline mm. or Francesca. I like that. Um, does anyone want to go first? If not, I can start us off. All right. So one of my prompts is, who has seen you at your most unhuman? Ooh. And I think it's actually our Legion, because the Legion has that power to see what connections um, you've had to someone else in a past life. And me being an amalgam of so many souls, I think that when you opened up that vision that you have, you saw this tangled mass of um, fate and reincarnations sort of put on hold as the souls join part of this amalgam. Mm. Uh, and so it's not just the visual of this, you know, mass of different faces and forms shifting and you know, too many arms and eyes, but also the the breach of the march of fate mm -hmm. so the this this is an interruption in reincarnation and i feel like that might even um like i might be the one who tells you that your fate isn't set that you can defy your tragedy um does that sound like a fun connection for us yeah, to start with i like that a cool. lot absolutely all right. Cool. Um, I'll yeah. go with uh, my first question then. Um, who was the beloved of a nemesis from a previous life? Ooh. Um, gosh, that's that's really good. Um, it would it would almost uh, either be uh, Amelia, your character, or Spooky mm -hmm. Witch, mm -hmm. which would make sense. Um, I mean, it could also be one of or multiple of the souls that are in the in, in our ship. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'll, uh, if 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 you're good with this, uh, one of your past lives, Amelia, mm -hmm. uh, was a uh, a lover of a nemesis of one of my past lives. Ooh, oh, so good. Yeah, I wonder who the nemesis could be, given that. <laughs> Obviously, Francesca. Yeah. Oh no, it could be too. <laughs> well, well, we won't play to find out. We'll just never yeah, know. Exactly. <laughs> and 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 what was your character's name again, Amelia? Amaranth. I love it. All right, give us a spooky witch prompt. Oh, let's see here. Uh, who thinks you're not all that weird? Um, I am going to say that it is uh, our our ship solar flare yeah um yeah. because i like part of my job is is keeping the ship going so right. i would hope that you don't think i'm like that weird for what i do <laughs> <laughs> like keeping you alive yeah uh -huh. 
Yeah, I feel like we we get each other and we can talk about soul stuff that yeah I can't really talk about with most people who are still on your side of the veil of mortality. Right. But yeah. No. Not weird. Not weird at all. Like the least weird living person mm-hmm. I've met. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when, like, the really old souls bubble up. The ones yeah. that have totally forgotten about. Like, um, how to be human. <laughs> right? How yeah. to be human. How to deal with your, like, biological life needs. Mm-hmm. That's Yeah, they're not the ones in charge of life support. <laughs> no. No, no, no. <laughs> Occasionally, Francesca has to bang her wrench wand on uh, some of the more recent <laughs> souls and be like, wake up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wake up. The the forgotten ones are uh, forgetting to give us air again. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Oh, I guess it's back to me. Yeah. Um, so I've got these two mirrored questions. Who, oh, yeah. All right. I know what I'm going to do. So one of them is who reminds you of someone who abandoned you? And then one is who most reminds you of someone you left behind? Mm. Um, I'm going to suggest that... Uh, no, they're both too good. I think I left behind Evangeline. Mm. So I think I have, like, in a... She she reminds me of someone I left behind. Maybe it was literally her. I can't quite remember. But mm. um, I I think maybe one of the reasons we keep crossing paths is because, you know, I wish I hadn't given up that connection mm. back then. Um, which does mean I have to pick... Well, I don't have to. I could make up another question, but um, who reminds me of someone who abandoned me? And that's really rough if that's Amaranth, because Amaranth is in this role of um, helping to recruit and mm. keep me going. So obviously that's really juicy. That's and I really juicy. do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, like I've been in this place before and it mm. didn't it didn't work out well. Um, so I've got a lot of like angst about being abandoned by um, Amaranth. If oh, that sounds yeah. good too. Yeah. Uh, especially when Amaranth is like probably the most qualified person on the ship to make a, a deep connection with. Right. You. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. Like you don't have a lot of other options for friends, so, really. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, you've got some anxious attachment happening here yeah. with the amaranth. Yikes! Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh, so good. <laughs> what drama. was your character's name? Uh, Ariella. Okay. Ariella Flourish. <laughs> so good. All right. So uh, my second and third questions were: um, Who has the face of an old, long dead friend? Um, and who first saw you draw a weapon from your body? Um, okay, so these are both really good. And I think <laughs> the one uh, that makes sense for the face of an old, long dead friend um, is Solar Flare. Um, the, yeah. the, per- the persona that is kind of your prime uh, persona that you display to the crew mm-hmm. uh, reminds me of that that person, that soul, that person that i knew in a past life uh that was this you know monarch like figure and you know it was like uh a a really good friend of uh my past self as well is that um so so this monarch figure do you think they are related to the beginning of your legion destiny is this like maybe the, the first life source of magic and power or is this sort of in the middle of your journey someone that you knew along the way oh i i I like the thought of it being like uh, one of the middle lives of of mine and then like we probably found a way to make uh to to keep uh her soul around maybe and uh and and that's why it's lasted so long through the ages to be able to become part of our, uh, you know, soul machine uh, crew effectively. Oh, so it actually is the same person or a reincarnation of that person yeah. was the one or something, yeah. Yeah, or something like that. Right. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I think that I think that's really ripe for some good, uh, you know, uh, tender moments, probably. 
uh, yeah. throat. Um, especially, uh, and some tragic moments as well, especially if, uh, you know, you don't, you don't remember if, if the memories aren't fully intact there. Right. Right. There, I, that's one juicy angle for drama. And another is when I do remember how, um, the the love that we shared led to my downfall yeah because of your tragedy oh no yeah uh -huh. oh uh -huh. no <laughs> I, i'm a danger to the ship <laughs> oh and yeah. then uh who first saw you draw a weapon from your body um i of course chose evangeline um oh. as well um i i imagine there was there's like a lot of dramatic uh you know fights to the like uh uh, first, uh, you know, sweat because it gets too steamy, and uh, <laughs> and and so we we probably have a, had a lot of conflicts, and Evangeline probably um, disarmed my sword, and it went right. flying off into space, and then uh, she thought that she has the full upper hand here, and then I reach within me and pull out my sword again, and and like take that surprise. Uh, a way which I which I normally don't have to do, right? Yes, my dear Miss Flores, you are full of surprises. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, it, that sounds amazing. Perfect. I love that. So, my yeah. next question is: Whom have the unseen warned you about? Ooh. Um, and I, I want to say it's Ariella. Yes, please. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I think that, like, if they're souls, they've been around potentially for a while, too. Yeah. Um, and know enough to know that, like, things don't go well for people that get close to you. Mm hmm Oh, yeah, because, like, all my friends, there's mm -hmm. going to be a little bit of love there, and something, you know, a little bit oh. bad is going to happen to all of mm -hmm. my friends. Yeah. Along mm -hmm. the way, at some point, who knows? It could be after I'm gone. It could be, uh, you know, before our our story finishes yeah yeah oh. because i like that this means that the answer to the next question who is your touchstone for what normal is <sighs> is evangeline yeah oh, yes. because the two of you are clearly not <laughs> <laughs> right like you're not mm -hmm. normal at all no so, yeah, exactly yeah no, but evangeline you know, that's I mean, a, I don't like she's her, a but... really good role model. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say mean... role model. I just said normal. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh so, so good. good. She would be so happy to take you under her wing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, and depending on the day, like I might be happy to be there. Oh, uh, I've got too many smittens from this already. What's going right? on? <laughs> you're you're playing as mm -hmm. intended. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. So. We're actually almost done with character creation. The only step after this is that we give each other our starting strings. Ooh. So this is a reflection of how much we think the other person has influence over us, how much we care about their opinion. Um, and it's entirely up to you for each other character. You give them zero, one, or two strings. Okay. Um, I'm going to give everybody two strings. Nice. Uh, and, and like I said at the start, these are uh, a little bit double-edged in the sense that you can use these to help each other or hinder each other or influence each other. Um, so it reflects like vulnerability as mm -hmm. well. But I care about all of my crew. I have deep personal connections with, with all of you. Um, and then... We can also do this for NPCs, and I'm just, I'm going to give Evangeline two strings. Absolutely. I want to be manipulated by a hot siren oh, pirate yeah. that I yeah. have some, some mysterious history with. And obviously, Francesca. I care so much about Francesca. Just want Kobold Baby to be okay. Right. So, um, yeah, that's how it goes. There's no limit. You can get everyone two, everyone zero. Uh, it's just what you think your level of... Um, connection or yeah. their influence over you would be yeah i'm gonna give evangeline just one because i feel like <laughs> I don't i don't know her that well but like i'd like to right mm -hmm. and i'm gonna say i'm gonna give francesca two here because i love her and i'll give each of you two yeah i'm i'm finding myself like here's everybody you get strains you get strains right 
Yeah. Um, so That's I gave the whole two point to, of this game. <laughs> I know. I gave, I gave two to everybody as well, uh, Amaranth uh, and Solar Flare. Amaranth because of that that connection of uh, the the lover of a nemesis from a previous life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel that we've got that, that sort of uh, big connection there. And then Solar Flare with the connection of this this monarch from ages past yeah um like absolutely uh like one of my good friends from back in the day uh and and then francesca just because you know francesca um who who doesn't have uh streams with francesca (laughs) right (laughs) um and then evangeline because why wouldn't you (laughs) <laughs> because she's evil, that's why. <laughs> that's not an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> She'll get those strings one way or another. Exactly. We know she's irresistible. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, absolutely. And I I I'm I'm thinking that my, this is a character that does uh unfortunately fall easily for mm-hmm. somebody and that's like just enhances her tragedy. It does, but I, Solar Flare, promise you that we will defy fate. We will vanquish your tragedy and get you the happy ending you deserve. Ooh. Oh, I can't. Yeah. Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so we did it. Yeah, we made characters. We made people. Oh, this is so good. Right? They're all pointed at and against each other in such fun ways. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can... You can imagine what this uh, story would <laughs> would do and the unknown twists that it would take that oh. we were all like, oh, I want to play to find out. So. I, yes. I am uh, extremely excited for our fanfic portion next episode. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, oh, my goodness. Yes. April, thank you so much for joining us for our character creation for Thirsty Sword Lesbians. This yes. was such a good time. It was Pretty such a good time. So good. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, it was wonderful. Thanks so much. I love the characters that you came up with. Yes. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to remind people where they can find you and what you are up to? Sure thing. So first of all, you can find Thirsty Sword Lesbians at swordlesbians.com or sword.gay. I am April Walsh. And I am Gay Spaceship Games, so check out my Twitter at Gay Spaceship GMS, and my itch is at GaySpaceship.com. And I am really excited about getting the expansion into people's hands. The, mm. It's at the printers. It'll be in physical form very soon and, <sighs> and shipping out to people. It's still, as of recording, available for pre-order on BackerKit. But if you don't pre-order it, it will soon be available at your friendly local gaming store. Yay! Lovely. Yeah. Well, thank you again for sitting down with us. And thank you, for everybody, for listening. Uh, please join us on the next episode for our discussion block. Call to action. Yeah, like that. It's still a really good game, Amelia. Still a really good game. Oh, so good. Uh, the Last place- week it was a good game, and I'm going to venture a guess that like next week might be a good game still. That's, Just saying. I, I guarantee it. Spoilers. Yeah. Spoilers. Uh, yeah, the playbook options are really such a joy, and uh, they, they kind of make my heart ache to play them all. Mm-hmm. Uh, this game has such a good premise, and it really hits a lot of uh, fantastic story beats that I love to see in role-playing games. Uh, you've got, you got romance, uh, exciting sword fights, um, you know, unapologetically queer characters uh, that you can fall in love with and have your heart broken to when things end in a dramatic tragedy. Um, you know, what more can you want? I mean, not really very much. No, it's just like, it's it's the queer content that I've wanted. Is that like, yeah. it's just unapologetically, like, not sorry for being queer. Mm-hmm. Also, there's swords. Yeah. I was recently a guest on Kill Every Monster, I got to join Aram and Dylan to talk about my favorite things, um, undead things, Mm -hmm. necromancy. So if you would like to hear about the moral and economic implications of raising the dead and willing your skeletons to your children (laughs) and spooky butlers, I cannot recommend this episode enough. I had a great time making it, and um, I think it came out wonderfully. Mm, It was so so good. Yeah, it was it was so much fun. Uh, you can find the episode at killeverymonster.com or on any podcatcher that you might use. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, we would love to get some more reviews from you, too. Uh, you can leave a review on Podchaser, Apple Podcasts, Podcast Addicts, Spotify, etc. And if you leave a five-star review, we will read it on the show. If you have a few minutes, we would love to hear from you. You can support our show and any other shows on the network by supporting the One Shot Network Patreon, which you can find at patreon.com slash one shot podcast. Uh, you can get access to the secret archive at the $5 and up level. And I feel like we don't say it enough, but I think it's like $15 and up um, is the book club. Too, oh, yeah. So you can get a new game every month. New game every there's month, there's yeah. more than just the one level. That's very true. <laughs> Um, but again, you can find that at patreon.com slash one shot podcast. Mm-hmm. And also do not forget to check out the truth of hearts bundle over on itch.io for some more amazing character options for thirsty sword lesbians and even some settings to help you get going into some grand adventures. Uh, it looks really amazing. Yeah. I was looking through some of them. It looks like a, a lot of fun. Absolutely. And, um, if you enjoyed the number of options that we had this week, uh, more options. More Always options. Better. Yeah. <laughs> 25 total playbooks if you get that, I think. Yeah. That's wild. That's amazing. That is all we have for today's episode. Join us next week for some great discussion with April. Um, find out what sort of wild fanfic we come up with for <laughs> our characters. Until then, stay safe, drink some water, get vaccinated, and keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we gotta read some show blurbs. 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 Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you will find other great shows like Warda. Warda is an original fantasy actual play podcast created by Ali Grauer and Drew Marzieski. It's one part Game of Thrones, two parts Downton Abbey, served on the rocks with a twist of Agatha Christie. Discover magic, mystery, and more than a little sociopolitical commentary along the way. The city holds thousands of stories. What will yours be?